Hi friends, today we're going to be talking about reviewing uh, fractions. So if you need to skip any of these parts, what I would suggest is go to all the way to the end of the video and what I'll do is I'll have the timestamps for each of these uh, so you can jump through to the ones that you need. All right, let's get started. All right, so we are going to talk now about reducing fractions. We're going to uh, re re like refresh this uh, this skill set. Okay, so oftentimes when you were reducing fractions, you were told find the greatest common factor, right? Uh, that is a great method. You can absolutely do that. However, I found uh, this other method I call the two, three, five, sometimes seven method seems to work really well. So let's just talk about that really quick. Uh, it's basically the rules of divisibility. First one, two, it ends in an even number. If something ends in an even number, then we know it is divisible by two and dividing by two just cuts something right in half. Uh, three is a really fun one. You add up the digits for a multiple of three. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you had thir uh, three plus zero gives us three and that's a multiple of three. So three is gonna go into this number. For 36, three plus six would give us uh, nine and uh, three is a multiple of nine. So it's gonna, three is gonna go into this number. Um, another one might be like 42. Four plus two is six, which is a multiple of three. So three is gonna go into 42. So that's how you tell on the threes. Now fives, it ends in a five or a zero. And also friends, if you have not yet grabbed your notebook, you're gonna wanna be writing these things down because these notes are gonna be helpful. So make sure you're doing that, especially these things. Uh, for sevens, honestly, I don't know. You're gonna have to learn your sevens. Learn, learn your multiplications uh, tables for sevens. Okay, so let's talk about reducing. First things first, I always look at my twos. And if I have an even number, like I do for number one, 30 and 36, all I do is cut those guys in half. And if I do, I get 15 and half of 30 is 15. Half of six is three, which means half of 36 is 18. Okay, I look at that, look at that again and I can't cut those in half again. Uh, so I try my three method. And if I add up one plus five, I get six. And if I add up one plus eight, I get nine. Both six and nine are multiples of three. So I'm gonna divide these guys by three and I get five over uh, six. I almost wrote nine, geez, with the math. All right, for number two here, you'll see we have 70 over 80. Yes, both 70 and 80 are even and I can cut them in half. However, this is a really fun one. All you gotta do, is lob those zeros off and you're left with seven over eight. Now that only works for zeros. Don't be coming for me if you're trying this with your twos or your fives. Uh, it only works for zeros because essentially what we're doing is dividing by 10. 70 divided by 10 is seven, 80 divided by eight is eight, or 80 divided by 10 is eight. All right, so 35 over 50, I can't do my twos because 35 is not even. I can't do my threes because five plus three is eight and that's not a multiple of three. So what I gotta do is divide by five because they both end in either a zero or a five. If I do that, I end up with seven over 10. All right, that's for reducing fractions. Moving on to the next one. All right, so our next refresh is mixed numbers to improper fractions. So this is a mixed number. Uh, and just as a reminder, a fraction in general is usually our part over our whole. And sometimes we have a whole lot more uh, than our whole here. We have four wholes and then we have three fourths, which is our part of our whole. So turning this mixed number into an improper fraction, here's what you do. You take, and again, you should be writing this in your notebook, four times four, which gives us 16. Then, so we multiply those two, then we add three. So 16, 17, 18, 19, we get 19. Our denominator, which is the bottom one, uh, always stays the same. All right, let's try that again. Six times two is 12 plus five is gonna give me 17. I got 17 over six. That is how you turn mixed numbers into improper fractions. All right, friends, now let's do uh, the reverse. So we're going from improper fraction to mixed number. Best way to do this is, you see three is on top of the table here. We're gonna put it under our table when we divide. What we're gonna do is do five into 30 six times uh, sorry, five into 33, six times. We wanna go into 33 without going over. Uh, six times five is 30. Subtract, and that gives us a remainder of three. And so we put three over whatever our denominator is here. So six and three fifths. All right, 89 over eight, same thing. 89's on top of the table. Let's go ahead and put it under the table here. 
Now we do eight goes into eight one time. One times eight is eight. Subtract and we get zero and bring down, our, and when we subtract, we bring down. Eight goes into nine one time, eight, and we have a remainder of one, so we take that one and we put it over our denominator of eight. That is how you put an improper fraction into a mixed number. All right, folks, we're gonna do a quick refresh on uh, adding fractions. Now, when we are adding fractions, we need our denominators to be the same. It's called common denominator. Okay, so on this case, we have three 14s plus five 14s. We end up with eight 14s. Okay, but what happens when we don't have a common denominator? Look at number two here. Uh, and again, make sure you're writing this in your notebook. We have a three and we have a five here. What we have to do is find our common denominator. You can use a multiplication chart to look at threes, and then we look at our fives. And if you look at those guys, you will see that we have 15 in common. That's because we can multiply three times five to get 15. Now, you can't always just multiply the bottom two numbers to get your common denominator. It will give you a common denominator, but you're gonna want your least common denominator unless you wanna have to reduce. And what I mean by that is, if I did six and eight, my least, if I multiply those together, I would get 48, right? But then let's take a look at our chart here. We've got six, and I'll highlight those guys, and then we have eight, and you'll find that the smallest number that they have in common here is 24, not 48, okay? So be very careful about that unless you wanna have to reduce at the end. Okay, so uh, for three and five, we're just gonna multiply them by each other. 15 is gonna be our common denominator. If I multiply the bottom, I have to multiply the top. If I multiply the bottom, I've gotta multiply the top. So let's go ahead and rewrite that fraction. We have five over 15 plus, because five times one, three, uh, five times three, plus six over 15. 15 equals, so we have five 15s plus six 15s. We now have 11 15s. Okay, now let's talk about when it's a mixed number. Now you can put these into an improper fraction. So four times one is four plus one is five. So five over four uh, plus two times two is four plus one more is five. So we get five over two. But again, we have to have a common denominator when we're adding and subtracting fractions. Our common denominator in this case, this is a case again where we don't wanna multiply them by each other because that would give us eight. And our common denominator is actually just four. So multiply this by two, this by two. Okay, so I end up with five over four plus 10 over four, which gives me 15 over four. I didn't leave myself enough room there. Sorry about that. So five over four plus 10 over four gives me 15 over four. Now, you uh, can leave that in an improper fraction form. That's totally fine. In fact, as you go on in algebra, you're probably gonna be using improper fractions unless you have to graph something because then you wanna put it in a mixed number so you know where to graph it. Uh, and you can also add while they are in mixed number forms. So like in this case, if you didn't know what five times 13 was and you didn't wanna do all the side work, what we can do is deal with just the fraction bits here. So that's three over five and that's one over eight. And I'm sorry that that's kind of tiny there. Uh, okay, so eight and five is gonna be, our least common denominator is 40. So multiply this by five and this by five, this by eight and this by eight. To make it a little bit easier for you to read, I'm going to switch into a different color so you can see here. Okay, so what I have now is 13 and eight times three is 24 over uh, eight times five, which will give me 40 plus two, uh, one times five is five over 40, which gives me then 24 plus five, 24, 24 40 is plus five forties gives me 49, 29, I'm so sorry, 29 fortieths. Now I can add the whole numbers. Uh, 13 plus two is gonna give me 15. So my final answer, 15, 29 uh, fortieths. Okay, now uh, again, see this would be a good case where you, you don't wanna have to turn it into an improper fraction because 72 times two and then ugh. That's terrible. So let's deal with the fraction bits first. I've got a denominator of four and two. And again, my common denominator is going to be four. So I have two over four and three over four. I'm adding those together. So that is gonna give me five over 
four, five over four. Now that is an improper fraction, right? So what we have to do, a little side work here, five over four, four goes into five one time with a remainder of one. So five over four is really one and one fourth. Now let's deal with this, the whole numbers here. Uh, five, six, seven, so I would have seven here. Uh, seven plus three is 10, so I'd have 107. 107 plus this guy over here gives me 108 and one fourth for my final answer. So that's another way of doing it. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about subtraction now. Uh, I'm gonna leave these in mixed numbers just so you can see, but you can always turn them into improper fractions and subtract that way. Uh, I'm going to deal with my fraction bits first here, and you see I have an 8 and a 5, and again, that's going to be 40 for our common denominator. So multiply by 5, multiply by 8, multiply by 8. Again, what, whenever I do on the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I end up with 24 over 40 and 5 over 40, which gives me, now remember, we are subtracting here. So 24, and I like to cross that out, 24 minus 5 is going to give me 19 over 40, 19 over 40. 13 minus two is gonna give me 11. Sometimes it, um, it doesn't always work out that way and you have to do a little bit of borrowing. So again, um, eight and five here, I'm sorry I chose the same ones for our common denominator, but let's take a look at this. If we go ahead and do this, we end up with 24 over uh, 40 and 35 over 40. Now, if I go to subtract uh, 24 minus 35, I'm gonna get a negative number, and so I can't do that. So this is where you have to borrow. Here's how you borrow. You take one away from this, so this becomes 12. Whatever this bottom one is, you add to this here. So what we have now is 12 and four, 64 fortieths minus two and 35 over 40. All right, so let's double check on our calculators. We've got 64 minus 35, and I say that because I don't wanna make a small arithmetic error on these videos. So we get 29 out of 40, and 12 minus two would give us 10. So that is how you subtract when you need to borrow. Again, you can put these into improper fraction form, and then you wouldn't have to do the borrowing bit but I wanted you to be aware of how that works. All right, friends, let's go on to multiplication because multiplication, you do not have to have a common denominator. Way easier, way easier. So when we multiply, we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, 35 over 27, kablam, that's it, you're done. You do always wanna double check, can I reduce that? No, uh, we are good to go, so excellent. Now, let's talk about number two here. If you have a whole number and you're multiplying it by a fraction here, uh, what you can do is set it up like this. So I have 12 over here and I'm multiplying by, multiplying by two and three fourths. So I split those up. So this is gonna be 24. I'm multiplying two, 12 times two to get 24. Now I wanna multiply 12 times three fourths. Let's do a little side work. 12 over one times three over four that gives me 36 over four, which reduces down to nine. Okay, once you have those both filled in, all you have to do is add them. So 24 plus uh, nine is gonna give me 33. So that's kind of a neat way to do it if you don't wanna have to turn it into a mixed number, or I'm sorry, into an improper fraction. Uh, okay, but in this case, let's, uh, I went out of order on these, so my apologies. Uh, what I do want you, though, to be familiar with is reducing your fractions but, uh, before you actually do the multiplication. This is called cross-canceling. Don't get it confused with cross-multiplying. Cross-multiplying is when there's an equal sign in the middle. This is where we're just multiplying flat out. Uh, and what it is, I'll show you the longer way of doing this. 5 times 3 over 12. And let's go ahead and write 12 as 3 times 4. And 10, we're gonna write as two times five. And the reason I do that is because now I can cancel out a five and I can cancel out a three, which leaves me with, and if you cancel everything out of the top, your numerator, uh, remember it's not a zero, it's a one. So what I have is one over eight. Now you're gonna to wanna to get quick at this. And so the way it would look as you get quicker is, oh, I see something that has a common. So divide by five, I get one, divide by five, I get two. Divide by three, I get one. Divide by three, I get four. 
and multiply straight across the top, I get one, straight across the bottom, I get eight. So you see how that kind of works. Again, that's called cross canceling, not cross multiplying. Okay, or you could turn them into improper fractions. So nine times one is nine plus one more is 10. 10 over nine times, uh, five times two is 10, plus the, uh, two is 12. So 12 over five. I now see an opportunity for me to cross cancel. I can say divide by five, I get one. Divide by five, I get two. Divide by three, I get nine. Divide by three, I get four. Multiply straight across the top, I get two times four is eight. And straight across the bottom, three times one is three. Now, if you did not cross cancel before you uh, went ahead and, and you just multiplied straight across the top, straight across the bottom, that's fine, but you're gonna have to reduce your fractions uh, at the end. So it's a good idea to go ahead and cross cancel. Okay, so now it's time for us to talk about division. And here's the neat thing. We never divide fractions. What we do instead is we multiply, multiply by the reciprocal. I hope I spelled that right. I always mess that word up. Uh, okay, so we don't divide by uh, any fractions. We never divide fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. You may have heard it as keep, change, flip. That, that's another familiar one. What that means is when we have a division problem, we say five, divided by seven, and then we multiply instead, and the reciprocal of a number is just flipping it around. So this is gonna be five over four. Multiply straight across the top. Uh, oh, well, we, we wanna look first to see, can we, can we cancel anything out? Uh, nope, so we get 25 over 28. Okay, and just a quick note on the reciprocal. Something like the reciprocal of three, remember we can turn anything into a fraction by putting it over one. So the reciprocal would be one over three. Uh, it, same if you had like uh, one seventh, our reciprocal then would be seven. That's it, seven over one if you need to. Now, sometimes you might see a division problem like this. Remember, fractions just mean division. So this is what we call a complex fraction. Uh, and what you can do is you can either write it out as a division problem, eight over 21 divided by 16 over 27, or you can multiply by the reciprocal, 27 over 16. Because when I do that, this cancels this, this cancels this, this cancels this, and I get rid of it. But if I do it on the bottom, I have to do that on the top. So we get uh, 27 over 16. And now again, I see an opportunity for me to cross cancel here. I've got eight and 16. So if I divide by eight, I get one. Divide by eight, I get two. Uh, over here, it looks like I've got a three in common. Divide by three, I get seven. Divide by three, I get nine. So. What we have now is one times nine and seven times two. So we get nine fourteenths. All right, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, let your teacher know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. All right, so this is the timestamp for all of these uh, different uh, subjects, just in case you need to jump around to look at each one of those. All right, we'll see you next time, folks.